All right, welcome to today's brew day. Glad to have you guys back. If it's your first time, go ahead and like, subscribe, hit the, the button below. We're going to take you on a little journey today. We have a special one today, right, Brandon? Yep, definitely, definitely. We're going to be doing a pale ale, but not just any pale ale. Yeah, so. that's going to be good. So technically here what we're doing is we're going to brew one beer and turn it into six, six beers yep. or maybe three, right? No, we're doing six no, different we're doing ones. Six. Yeah, six different six. ones. So we're going to have six different flavors. We're going to take you guys along the way throughout the brew process, but yep. we're going to go ahead and take off and what you think uh, is going to be your favorite one here, just to kind of mm. give a little hint. It's kind of, I'm going to tell you right now, uh, I like pineapple IPAs, so I'm thinking of pineapple parallels. going to be not too bad. Of course, you know. Uh, well, no, we can't, we can't spoil everything. Yes, yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. Sit back, relax, enjoy the show. There's going to be a couple things we're going to time lapse through just so you don't have to sit there through the boring parts. You get to see the, the good things. Yeah, one of the boring parts is what we're about to start, start on right, right here. Uh, we got, we did figure out the other day, almost 75 pounds of grain that we're about to mill into this. Yeah. So, uh, if, uh, if you've been here before too, you see a couple of new things. We have a timer down here now. Yeah. Um, we fancy, yo. <laughs> almost bougie. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know when you guys will be watching this, whether it's a year from now, maybe it's tomorrow, maybe it's the next day, but it's currently January over here right now, and it's 20-something, oh. uh, what is it, 21 degrees outside, and we had a little bit of an AC problem out there, so it's slightly cold in here today, but it's starting to warm up. We got some heaters gone, so just kind of bear with I'll us. I'll just start hugging the pots. Start hugging good. the pots, but that's why you can see right now our water's a little high over here. This pot's a little cold. We're about to transfer over, and we're going to start mashing in, so I'll bring you all in, matter of fact. Yeah, we're gonna do like that. As y'all can see, we got some. We got five buckets here. Like I said, right at about seventy-five pounds of grain is what we got going in on this one here. Uh, I'm sure through the. Do you remember what our grain bill is without looking at the computer? Without looking at the computer, I know we have two row. We have wheat. We have Munich. We have Victory. That's it. That's it. Yeah, there you that's go. it. So you nailed it. So there you go. Sit back and relax. Yep. All right. No. Yep, do it. All right, y'all. We are milled. We are temp. Time to start mashing in. I'm oh, the, I'm the, you're the stir. I'm the stir? Yeah, big paddle for stirring, too. <laughs> all right. Oh, I'll give you all this shot right here. We also film it from the top so y'all be able to get a good view. And I'm, a, again, trying to stay out of y'all way while I do this. Plenty fine. Yeah, I have learned that this shake method is definitely the way to go. Well, if there's any doubt it was cold in here, if you sit on these pipes like I'm doing. <laughs> or if you want to warm up, come sit on this pot. <laughs> You good? You sure? Okay. I mean, it's warm. It's good. Okay. I'm just, hey, we're just looking out for you. Yeah, this grain build isn't going to be too thick, so we shouldn't have much issues here. We're not shooting for a very high alcohol content here. Like we said, we're making six beers out of one. And these are going to be more of a flavored beer. beer. I'm sure y'all figured that out by now. Uh, so we're, I think what we were shooting for, I think 5.8, 5.9 percent yeah, alcohol. Yeah, a little over five and a half. It's more about the flavor on this one than this straight getting drunk. We have other beers to get drunk on, right? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I think we've talked about this in some of our other videos. It's more of a, we've been trying to brew more to style lately. 
instead of just full on homebrew where every beer is over six, six and a half, seven percent. You know, it just it gets hard on some of our parties. Some of the non heavy drinkers don't want to drink because it's just too much alcohol, which I don't blame them. Yeah, it's I mean, kind of tough to get somebody that drinks Michelob Ultra to <laughs> drink a seven or an eight percent beer. Right, right. So not that it's difficult. They love the flavor, and then two yeah. beers later, they couple tape. Yeah. <laughs> and as we mentioned uh, earlier, y'all seen the clock. Uh, I'm assuming, Brandon, because you're the camera guy. Can they see the double line right now? Uh, they can see the very bottom of it, but I'll, I, can, I can show it to them. So uh, if you've seen some of our other videos, I think Lori's going to come and adjust here for us. If you've seen some of our other videos, you heard us talk about uh, we did a donation beer for St. Jude for a marathon run. Um, they came back and gave us something, which I think we always hand it up now, which is pretty nice of them. They didn't have to do that for us, uh, but we definitely appreciated it. And it'll also be featured anytime we do do events. It'll now be on the back of our tent. All right. Got one more, bro. One more. You ready for it? So next, the next few events we're going to do, we're actually, we have some bars. Codes, uh, some QR codes. QR we, codes. Yeah. Build that we're gonna attach to the to the screen up there that Lori had zoomed up to for y'all. Um, that way, if somebody wants to come and while they're at the event, they want to subscribe to our YouTube channel, or something they'll better do it straight from there. YouTube, Facebook, Facebook, Facebook. TikTok, Instagram, Twitter slash Twitter X. slash X. But the most content y'all gonna get from us is 100% on YouTube. 100%. You know, as you sit here and you pour this, I keep thinking about that 20 degree temperature outside. Yeah. And what we'll be cleaning this. Yeah, I, I, I've been trying to put that out of my mind that, you know, will we even have water in the hose or will the hose be frozen? Yeah. How will we carting hot buckets of water outside from in here <laughs> to clean? Wait. Oh, the things we do for beer. You like it? I like it. You like it? Uh, let it go through its 10 minute rest for the grain bed and uh, we, we had temperature. Oh wait, we're at temperature. We're at temperature now, but we'll let it uh, kind of settle in before we start. All right. Um. All right, so there you go. Grains in. Grains in. Y'all know the process by now if y'all have watched. If, if not, basically what we're doing now is we're creating sugared water for our yeast to eat. So we've milled the grain, stuck it in the pot. We're going to be cooking at 154 degrees. We have our HLT set to 158 for now, which is four degrees above until everything stables out. But we've learned, right, four degrees is about, about normal. Four degrees is our swing. Yep. Which we can adjust as we uh, on the fly as right. needed. So right. here we go. We'll uh, we'll catch you guys back in a little bit. We're going to start our timer here in a second. We're just going to make sure it's stable. I can see it's still dropping. Yep. 60-minute mash once yep. it stabilizes out. 60 minutes. So, so for us, it'll be an hour. For y'all, it'll be a few seconds. See y'all in a bit. We're getting a tip. We're getting pretty close here at 151. We need about three more degrees. Then we're back. Then we'll start our 60 minute timer. But uh, we've been resting for about 10 minutes. So we're going to go ahead and take our first pH reading here, see where we're at, and see how much lactic acid we need to add. Yep, so yep. I think on this one, we're shooting for 5.3 or 5.2, I think is our, our number. I am in the wrong screen. 5.2. 5.2. Yep, that's our, that's our target. All right. So we are currently sitting at. That's it for a bit. It's a little warm. We're going to let it cool off a little bit, but it looks like it's going to be about 5.8, 5.7. So we're going to go ahead and plug those numbers in, and then we're going to add our, uh, our lactic acid. So we'll be back here shortly. All right. So we plugged the numbers in. We need a total of 55 milliliters of uh, lactic acid. And we're right at 5.75. Right, right, right. And we're looking for 5.2. 5.2. So here we go. Very dramatic. Here we go. Wow. Oh, oh, you got that professional <laughs> drip. That's drip. Going on there. Yeah. Uh -huh. Spice a lot. Just season it up. All right. So that's in there. We're going to give it one more little stir here. We ain't going to bother y'all with camera on that. Uh, we'll let that sit. We'll pull another reading here in 10 minutes. But as you can see, we're already starting to roll our timer. So, all right. Here we go. Uh, we're about 30 minutes in of it sitting after we put the lactic acid in. 
Uh, Brandon, I think we put, uh, what was it, 52, 53 milliliters of, of lactic acid. 55, okay. So we were sitting at 5 point, uh, 5.8. 5.75. 5.75, there you go. So uh, we let it sit for 30 minutes, and now we had 5.2, which is targeting what Beer Smith wanted us to be. So there you go. We, we hit our numbers. We're good to go. We're going to go ahead and let this sit for another 30 minutes. We mashed for 60 minutes. We held temp at about 155, 154. It's kind of bounced a little bit, but we were shooting for 154. Like we said, we're making six beers out of one on this one. And uh, with with the extract we're adding, we're going for sweetness here. So that's why we're a little high on our on our tip. So we want the sweetness to interact with the extract. With, with the extract on our flavorings. Yep. Because some of the flavors might be a little bland. Right. And, and some of them a little peppered. Oh. Some of them a little peppered. <laughs> so right now, what we got going on next here, Brennan? All right, so we are about to come out of the mash tun, go into the ball kettle while also simultaneously sparging from the HLT into the mash kettle. This is clean, right? It's clean, it's good, ready to go. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and do a little bit of plumbing here. We're gonna we're gonna flip a couple switches, try to get our flow equal from one to the other, make sure we're not dropping. Yeah, so, I'm gonna uh, let, I'm gonna let, let, make sure y'all can see this too because I've been top. I've been on this system for a while now, and uh, oh yeah, they can see it. I've been on this system for a while, and I still don't know how the hell to do this. <laughs> All right, so we're flipping here. Okay, so we're going to kill. We're going to kill the pumps. Yep. Kill both of them. Got them. All right, so we off, off. All right, so now we want this to flow this way instead of back around. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to flip. That's off, so we're good. This is off. The, the one below needs to go up. There you go. So now we're blocking off. So just so you guys know. Wherever our handle is, is off. Uh, we had a comment the other day, somebody asking to kind of show our plumbing, and, and it was on this one. I'll get to it here shortly. But over here on the ball kettle, you can see here where our valve is at is what's off. So this is coming over from our, our mash tun. So we're blocking from going back, which is going through our counter flow and back here. Uh, we have this valve pointing up, so liquid can't go down, um, which I'm sorry, that's wrong. Nope, that is wrong. No. We, we're going to cut off from the pump. Yep, cut off to the pump. Yes, there you go. Like that. So okay. now, so we have liquid coming from our mash that's going to come in. It can't go this way, so it has to go down. And it's going to come back. It's going to come drop the up kettle. and back on top. So yeah, it's kind of opposite. Normally, whenever y'all think about valves, two-way valve, wherever the handle's pointing, that's your flow. On these, wherever the handle's pointing, it actually shuts it off. That's the style T valves that we're using on this. That way, we can go three ways where our flow. There you go. So, so the question in the comment was here on this one, um, on the mash tun. We don't have the, the two valves here, and that's because just of what we need here. It's just It wasn't needed. No need to spend the money. So same thing here. We had a valve here that's blocking currently going this way. So what was happening was is we were coming out our pot through the pump, down, through the HLT, which you can see here, through the coils, back up, and then on top, which is our HLT warming the water up. So the question, I think, was asked right here, which is it's a T for your, uh, for your question and your comment. So basically, it's again, we're going to use our valve handle to see which way we're going. So right now, we need to go that way and not not into the HLT. So to the HLT. A, so I'm just going to take this and I'm going to push it all, all the way, way down. So, so now that's blocking the HLT. Now it's pumping it back towards the ball kettle. There you go. So we're coming, we're coming through the pump and then back then across. So now we need to fix our HLT water, which we need to, we need to bump up. Go ahead and send that to 168. So we're actually going to sit here and let this heat up real quick. We're going to let this get to 168. I'm going to go ahead and turn this say, one back ahead, on. Go ahead and finish telling them about the, the plumbing. Yeah, but let me get this back on so oh, we're okay. good. So we're going. We're coming down. We didn't change anything here. Let me turn that on. And there, go ahead and turn that pump back on just so we can get circulated. Okay. So now what's going to happen here once we start bringing over is we're going to pump beer down and through. And on here, we have two different valves. We have two three-way valves, again, like over here, that just turn slightly different. So, again, where the valve is turned, it's off. So we're pumping. We're blocking this, which is going to our counterflow. We come up. I'm blocking here, which is going to the other side of our counterflow. And then it's coming up and then back over the top. Now, we have a valve here because in a second here, we're going to try to pump over to our mash, which is our sparge. So we're going to turn the valve, which is going to go through the counterflow, which isn't technically doing nothing. We're rinsing our water through our HLT. Right. But it was the cheapest way for us to get our sparge water back into our mash tank. So 
Give us a second here. We're, we're climbing pretty quick. We're already at 160 over there. We'll be right back, and we're going to go ahead and set up our sparge and show you guys what we're doing here. Yep. So we'll see you in a second. All right. That didn't take long. You can see you up at uh, 170, so we're good. We're going to go ahead and uh, run our sparge on top. Uh, again, we talked about this, and like Brandon said just a while ago, as the liquid drops, we put on top. So this is normally about a 30, 35-minute process for us. Right. So we uh, we mashed for 60. We ended up sparging for about 30. So here we go. I'm going to go ahead and fix right. the plumbing. Kill the pump. Get the pump, turn this off. I need to redirect. We already done here, so I am going to leave that off. We're gonna come up, so that's still good. I'm blocking here, and then I'm blocking here. And now we're going back around and through. I need to turn this down because we're way too high. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and open this one and open this one. Go ahead and turn both our pumps on. I'm gonna turn this way down. Tell me how, uh, on this one here, Brandon, tell me how low I am. I should be barely coming off the top. Uh, you're flowing, flowing. Flowing, flowing? Flowing, flowing. How about over here? We're spewing. On both of them? Oh, yeah. How about now? Okay, you're down to about a medium trickle here. And about a medium trickle here. But again, y'all, this is the whole give and take. Got to play with it. There's no... Set it to two on either one of these. We got to try to play with it till we get it. <laughs> It'd be nice though, Blickman. Hey, how about some numbers? One, two, three. Oh, oh. hey, Blickman, got a better one for y'all. Auto Sparge. I know, y'all got that figured out. Auto Sparge, send us one. This will fix this whole issue. Yeah, the, flump would, <laughs> the, the pump would be nice. And what Brandon's talking about is there's a kit you can buy. We already have half of it. You can see it here. Um, this little tube right here sits on a on a floater, like in say, like your toilet. Yeah, like a toilet bowl float. So basically, yeah. you can leave your pump on. It doesn't matter what your setting is down here. Whatever you're flowing here, the pump or the floater controls what you're coming in here, which keeps you keeps you level. So the whole thing is, is you don't want to hit too much water here, right? Because then you're you're really just rinsing, which is. I mean, technically you are anyway. It's more to stop you from overflowing the pot with sparge water while you try to come over into the right. into the ball kettle. But we're gonna go ahead and let this run. Like you said, it's about thirty minutes, so we'll see you guys in a bit. And when we come back, we'll do a pre-ball gravity check for y'all, and we'll get this ball started. So uh, sparge, she is a done. We're at uh, forty-two two gallons, gallons. Forty-two yeah. gallons in the ball kettle. Um, got this. Turn on, heating up. No, not yet. Not, not, yet. not yet. We okay. got the we got the phone here. You oh, can see go. you can see over top here. You can kind of see it a little bit over here, but it's not much. You can see my hand here. Uh, we still have a little bit of water in here, but we we hit our numbers, so we're not we're good. We're not going to pull anything else over. We're about to take a pre ball gravity, but we're also going to flip the switches and get this circulating as well as cooking. So, Brandon, you want to go ahead and turn our elements on? Uh, yes, I will turn the elements on. Do you want to start working on the pumps? Make sure they're all where they need to be, or did you already get that, or? All right, so our elements are on now. We're starting to cook here. We have both elements to get us up to temp. Um, I'm going to go ahead and recirculate here. So we're going to kill. We're going to do the same thing here. We're going to turn the valve up. So y'all can see here we're up, which is pushing out the pump down and back up. So now we're just basically going to whirlpool through hit temperature. I literally just, I walked in front of you, Lance. It's fine. You good? It's fine. All right. So that's, I, that's my money. I have this one open. Uh, Brandon, you want to go ahead and uh, turn the pump on? A little bit of cavitation, turn it off a second. These pumps are pretty good, just like the um, kind of like my spikes. Your spikes. Yeah. I mean, you turn them off and on. They pretty much hit, they pretty much take. Go ahead and kick it. Every now and then, you gotta kind of burp it and bleed them a little bit, but not very often. Go. So we're pumping. We're starting to rotate in here, so that means we're starting to whirlpool. So we got that gone. We're gonna go ahead and take a little sample. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna hit that. We do have the. Uh, we have our hydrometer. Yeah, I say, yeah, I say get the correct one. I didn't know which one to grab. So we're going to go ahead and grab We that. have one hydrometer that will read hot, and we have one hydrometer that reads cold. Um, this tube I did spray with sanitizer before we did this. This is something, guys, that I highly recommend. Uh, we saw cir Shark Circuit, sorry, on YouTube that had one of these, and he actually recommended this. It's by uh, Brewing America. You know, it's good in this case. You need to take pre balls and stuff like that to watch your numbers as you're going. Uh, you can hit it up to 100 and I think it's 64 degrees is what it's calibrated for. It's the, the calibrated temperature is at 154, which is what we were cooking at. So well, we're cooking at. That's where we at. 
So we like to take our numbers just to see where we're at so we can tell what the, uh, our pre-ball is down to our final gravity. Our original gravity, sorry, not final. Final would be after we ferment. ferment. So uh, if you can see here, which I think you can, you can see our color. So obviously, like we told you all, we're going to slowly start giving you all more information. We brew in a pale ale, I think we said at the beginning of the video, uh, for the base beer. And we're doing six different flavors. So some of the flavors are going to be a uh, habanero, uh, mango habanero is one of them. Yes. And a watermelon. And then two more are going to be a, we're doing a blueberry. A, a pineapple. And a pineapple. And we'll give you the other two later. Oh. Uh, so that's four of the six. So like I said, this is something a little bit unique here. We're, we're brewing one beer and turning it into six. And obviously we're doing that with ex extract. Uh, and I'll show you here. The brewer's best. Uh, so I'll grab these two just because it's different. Uh, so we're like Brandon said, we're, you in the, we're using the brewer's, brewer's best. And in this case, we have a habanero and we have a mango right here. So in this one, we have to mix. Uh, the recommended dose for these is one per five gallon. One, one bottle per five gallon. So yeah. obviously, we're mixing this in twice with two different ones. So it's going to be two half bottles here is what we're going to do here. Uh, we may go a little heavier. On, on the, the mango, mango versus maybe. the habanero. The habanero, but I am a spice It guy. is his, this is his flavor, <laughs> so it's going to be 50-50. Let's be honest. Yeah, I'll probably go with the habanero. <laughs> so. uh, last tip is a, it's a pre-shaken, not stirred. Pre-shaken, not stirred. Um, 1060 is our pre-gravity. 1060, so yeah. uh, what's our, what's going to be our original gravity? Uh, If we hit our numbers, you mean? While he's looking that up, y'all can see up here on this camera, we have a nice whirlpool going, so we're we're flowing pretty good here. Uh, we're sitting at, uh, it says 145.8. It's probably going to climb pretty quick because we were just barging over the top. Uh, obviously, that number is also going to go up as we boil down. We had 42 gallons. I think our goal at the end is uh, 35, I think is what we try to come across with. So yes. that number is going to shoot up. So we're pretty much done with this. We're going to start. Uh, 1056 is supposed to be our, our pre-gravity. So we're actually high. We're so. actually high. What, what was our original what we were shooting for, for our ABV? Um, 5.7. 5 so we'll probably 7. be about 6.2, 6.3. Yeah, we'll which still isn't that bad. It, you know, just flavored beers, you just don't want to feel alcoholic because that alcohol kind of takes away from your sweetness. Now, you do need those high numbers. What I can do as well is when I get to the fermentation tank, which that's another thing too, real quick, we actually have our water in here. We got this sanitized. Um, is being sanitized right now. We have uh, star sand in here. Yep, we have star sand. Uh, in a little bit, we'll start bringing it over to this tank so we can do our, our counter flow, which I've seen us do before. Y'all, yep. can y'all appreciate the Blakeman Riptide and the fact that it is whirlpooling 42 gallons of beer right now? <laughs> yep. And our dip tube goes down to about here. Yeah. So, so this is pretty awesome. I looked down, I was like, whoa, hold on. <laughs> All right, well, we're going to go ahead and cut it off here. We'll see you guys in a bit once we uh, get to a ball. Like we said, we're doing a 90 minute ball. So, we're going to, we'll go ahead and do the first 30 minutes. There's no need for you guys yeah, to Yeah, we'll see bring y'all in at the 60 minute the 60 mark minute when drop. we do that first hop drop. Which we are dropping, I think it's four and a half ounces of, uh, it was supposed to be Horizon, but they don't sell it no more. So, I think we, we, we got a nugget, right? Yes. We're doing, we're doing four and a half, four and a half ounces of nugget. Four and a half ounces of nugget. So. Hi, Joe. Hi, Joe, in here. First 30 minutes of our 90 minute ball is done. Go ahead and uh, kill that noise. It's time to do our 60 minute hot drop. Get uh, rolling and boiling, and that's not all. So Y'all can't see it. Rolling and boiling, and ready to rock and roll. Oh, um, hey, turn our, uh, our thing on. Our thing on. Nope, not that one. So we have a 60 minute hop drop, four and a half ounces of Horizon hops. Are uh, you ready with that paddle for the uh, obligatory, uh, <laughs> holy crap, what the hell's happening to me? Lori, wait, 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 yeah, Lori, I thought you were monitoring my water.
So we're gonna see y'all again in 45 minutes. <laughs> New timer, it's awesome. All right, guys, so we had the 15 minute 15 drop. minute mark. We're yeah. gonna drop the ceramides, which is our uh, nutrient drop for our yeast. Then we're gonna go ahead and stick in. Brandon's gonna go ahead and drop it. As plop, you can plop, see fish, here, fish. we have this pot is, even though the paddle's dirty, pot is clean, pump's clean. It looks like we're still pushing uh, water through it, but it's actually not touching the pump. The pump's actually cleaned already. But we are pushing. I'm Sanitizer. sorry, we're done now. No, we're we had sanitizer yeah. that was pushed through. From the fermenter. From the fermenter through our counter flow around our hose that's hooked to our ball kettle. We, we actually pumped it back up and it is in our HLT tank now, which will technically be our cold water for our counter flow. Counter flow. Like we yeah. told y'all before, we try to save water whenever we do this. That way we don't waste water. We talked about the beers. We named four of them, but we're going to go ahead and name all six now. So we got the Hibernator Mango. Yes. We have the Blueberry. Yes. We have the pineapple. Yes. We, we have, have the, the blackberry. You already said blueberry. We oh. have the black currant. The black currant. We, we got have the, the black cherry. Black cherry. And, and we, we have pineapple. Watermelon. I said pineapple. Watermelon. All right. Watermelon. <laughs> yes. So six different flavored beers off of one, one brew. brew. We have multiple people that like multiple things. And, well, let's face it. We all like everything that's in that list. So. Right. Right. You can see here. I'm assuming it's not. I'll try to zoom in for the camera. Uh, we started with 42 gallons of beer. It looks like we are currently at, uh, where are we? 45, 30, 36, 37, 38. We're right 39, at 38 yeah. gallons. Our goal is 32. We still got another 15 minutes to go. We're, uh, we're not going to ball that much off, but that's okay. I'd rather have too much than not enough. We're going to go ahead and pump all that back over to here. We're going to grab our reading soon, which we'll give you guys that after our last drop. Uh, we do have a burnout hop drop on here, which is our zero. Yep. Uh, what's our next drop? Brandon, 10 minutes, what? Do you remember? Um, at the 10... Oh, wow, that's a lot of drop. Because um, we have a 10-minute drop and we have a flame out. Correct. At 10 minutes, we have 3 ounces of Cascade, 3 ounces of Centennial. And then at flame out, we have 3 and a quarter ounces of Cascade, 3 and a quarter ounces of Centennial. So so we got uh, we have drops for our flavoring, and then we have it for our aroma. Right. What's happening. So we will do a 10-minute rest. On our flame out just to give it that yes. last little bit, which will work cool. Very well, cool. And then we're going to go ahead and pump it through, which you guys will see that. But just to kind of give you a heads up. See you guys back here in a bit. In uh, three minutes, 32 seconds. Good timing. All right, there you go. That's our uh, next drop. We're going to go ahead and drop our 10-minute drop, which is the three ounces of each, like Brandon said, Cascade yeah, and Centennial. Get, get the paddle ready, my ball. So we're gonna go Incredible Hulk coming. Oh, oh, oh yeah. that's fine. That's all right. Anytime hops get brought into the party, it's a, it's a party. <laughs> we'll see you guys in 10 minutes or a couple seconds. Yeah. As y'all can hear, we are uh, down to, well, zero. That's it. Go ahead and kill Flame the elements. So our last drop we got here, I'll go ahead and grab it. Let me get around right in here. Rich. So this is our zero minute uh, hop drop, which, which is, is three and a quarter ounces of Cascade, three and a quarter ounces of Centennial. I guess we don't have to worry. Yeah, well, I mean. It should be fine. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, we're gonna go ahead and whirlpool this while we wait. We're gonna do another ten minutes for him. If you yes. want to go ahead for the next timer. Bang. Let's see. We're gonna go ahead and flip this over again. We want to kill it here. So we're up and through. So just like we showed you guys earlier, we're coming back through the pump. We got it blocked off tonight. Go up, which is to our counter flow. We're coming back up and we're gonna whirlpool this. So let me open up the pump. Brands, go ahead and turn on our pump. Yeah, for those of y'all that are new to brewing, y'all don't understand. Whirlpooling, what we're doing is our, our line is coming in, going down. We have a pipe towards the side of the kettle. It's literally going to take that, that wort on the inside of this kettle and whirlpool it. Sorry. So it's going to stir these hops in to this, and it's going to make a whirlpool, like it's, like it's called. So it's going to take all of the sediment, all of the hops, all of everything that is in the ball kettle, it's going to settle it to the middle of the kettle. And when it's time to transfer this through our counterflow into the fermenter, all the sediment will rest in the center of the pot instead of going into our lines and into our kettle, which gives us a cleaner beer in the end. So here you go. You can you can see it here now. It's Secondary picture in picture view. And I'm going to say Lance is going to edit it and put it here. So y'all can see how it's already starting to whirlpool. 
It's going to take all of these hops, bring them in the middle, and in the process, also stir it and put it into the into the wort. Get it okay. ready to go. Um, this is going to run for 10 minutes. After 10 minutes' time, we're going to pump it through the counter flow, get it chilling, which while in the meantime, we're going to add ice to the HLT, which helps us to cool off the counter flow to get it into that fermenter, get it ready to pitch the yeast. Correct. So we'll see you back in about two seconds. And for us, it'll be eight minutes. Eight more minutes. Two seconds. We're not talking. Hear that? <laughs> that is the end. All right. So that's pretty much the end of the brew. The switch. The switch. <laughs> we're going to start pumping into our, uh, our fermentation tank over here. So I'm going to go ahead and let Brandon turn the pumps on. Let me put my beer down. We're going to drain the water that's left. Like I said, we, we pushed the sanitizer through the lines. Obviously, we, we need to be clean now from here. We need to be sanitized. We can't let bacteria jump in there before our yeast, which our yeast is currently over there. We're going to go ahead and put the switches, Brandon. If we want to go ahead, uh, the bottom switch needs to be pointed down now. No, we need to go this way. And then the next switch is good. Scoot over a little bit and you can show them, show them what's going oh, on there. sorry. Nope, yep. you're good. So you're coming through the pump and then through we're going the pump, down, up and up, which this line's in the brew stand. Y'all can't see it, but I'm sure y'all can see it's going over there to that red counterflow to our, uh, what's the name of that counterflow? Come on, help me out here. Um, so accelerator. Accelerator. Our accelerator counterflow. Um, then what's in Lance's hand right now is the beer side of that that's going to go up into our fermenter. But we have sanitizer in there right now. So we're going to have to push beer through, get it through the counterflow, get the sanitizer out before we get it into the fermenter. Yep. So you ready to go with this? Go ahead. I'll tell you when I see beer. Oh, hey, this would be helpful. That would be helpful. All right, here we go. I got water coming through. Uh, let me go this way. There you go. Go that way. Let's see if we got and water. There you go. Stop, stop it. Off. Now, the whole time he's hooking this up to shell aware, that's the beer side of the accelerator. The water side of the accelerator is going through this HLT system. We're kind of using it kind of like an immersion chiller. Kind of. Technically, yep. we have the sanitizer and water that came out of the fermenter while we were sanitizing it. It is now in here with <laughs> 80 pounds of ice in here to chill it through the HLT as we chill it out. As we chill it out, right. So, All right. so let's see what we're at here. Can you see everything? Turn a little bit. All right. There we go. All right, so I'm going to open this. Turn that on. So you can now see here. Pump out of here. Hard for you guys to see, but we got beer coming back in again. We have uh, everything closed, oh. obviously. Oh, that's open. Okay. Yeah, we have our, our blow off open for now just so we don't build up pressure in our tank. Because obviously, if you build up too much pressure here, it stops your pump from going, uh, from pushing. So your pressure has to equal out. Obviously, that's just common. Uh, see, Lance, if I can. So you can see down there in the sight glass. There's beer down there in the sight glass, and that line that he's telling about. See how the valve is open going down to there. That's normally where we have our bubbler set up. Right now, we're just using it as a vent, not to build up pressure in uh in the fermenter. Correct. So can you see the screen right now, Brandon? Uh, I can make them see the screen. Let's see. That's uh, as best I can get. 57 point something. 57 point four, which technically you can see our heaters on right now. So we're, we're not coming in at 57 degrees. Uh, we're probably coming in at right about 70, 75. We just haven't hit the probe yet. That's just what the temperature is in the tank. We've been running our glycol system the whole day just to kind of chill it in here to kind of give us a, a head start as well as we were chilling our, uh, sanitizer in here. So we actually have the fermentation on right now. It's set to 68, which is what we're going to be fermenting this beer at. Uh, about 12 days in, whenever we bottom out, whenever I told you all earlier about our number, where we try to keep our sweetness, we're going to go ahead and kill that. Uh, and then we'll, we'll jump it up to 72 to let it clean out. Then from there, we're going to go ahead and we'll cold crash it. We'll drop the yeast and everything out the bottom. And then we have our carbonation stone here, which we carbonate right before we, uh, we keg it. And it uh, sits for two weeks, which we're not going to put our extract in, obviously, till we keg. Yep, that's going into kegs. Because we have six different flavors again, so just just FYI. And 
You can hear yep, we are. They can see it. Our yep, kegs they are can technically see it. sitting up here right now with. Uh, there are clean, sanitized, well, there's, begging for pale ale. There's actually going. sanitizer in there now, too. Oh, yeah. So we're going to finish cleaning everything out. These two are technically clean right now. It's sanitized water in here. All we got to do is drain all the water and dry it. And then we get to go play in. It's It warmed up a little. We get to go play in 40 degree weather. Yeah. 43 to go, go clean that one. So next time y'all see us, we'll be. Uh, Pitching east. Pitching I guess. east. So. Yeah. So welcome back, everybody. As you can see, everything's back together. Everything's somewhat clean. Uh, I'm not gonna lie to you guys. It was cold outside. Brandon had to defrost two or three times. Hands uh, are still purple. They are clean. But no, I'm, it's clean, clean. Some poured out. Yeah. But I mean, it's water and sanitizer. Yeah, but there will be. I mean, you can see already starting to dry. And I'll be honest with you, even on a good day when we clean, we get kind of this. I'm probably going to come in here tomorrow with a wet, a dry napkin and just kind of clean everything down, wipe it down. Just to get kind of that, that, that powder, that powder whatever that powder, powder is. Yeah. It's there every time. But it was cold. It was miserable today. It was just a bad day. No doubt. Uh, the brew day was good, though. Brew day was good. Brew day was good. We started about 1030. It is currently six o'clock. So you can figure that out. That's eight, eight, eight and a half hours. hours. Yeah, so that it was a long brew day for us. It was actually a long day, but nothing went wrong. It was just one of those days where everything just kind of we we were playing golf and everything else while we were doing it. But it is what it is. Well, we got some good food <laughs> sous vide too. John hooked us yeah. up. I still then made some sides, a side that I've been waiting for for a while again. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so, so we're down to sixty eight degrees right here. We're about to pitch. We're gonna go ahead and show you guys that. Yep. yep. If I can get Brandon to go over there and I'll, grab them, I will definitely do it. I'll go ahead and open. So we're gonna go ahead and pitch. We have a uh, an American L that we're dropping, right? Yes. And yep. Unfortunately, because it's a barrel, we have to do it in three starters. I see Brennan's coming over here with two. You know what? Let me grab the magnet. Oh, I forgot that. I'm sorry. Pro tip: If you're using a stir plate and you got a little magnet in your uh, your yeast to stir, you know, while you're sitting there waiting, take a magnet, stick it at the bottom. If you want to go ahead and sorry, I don't know where it's at. There you go. It'll hold your magnet for you. <laughs> got you. So you don't pour your magnet into your fermentation Which tank. sucks. We've done it before. <laughs> it's just there to get to clean. So here we go. All right. I'm going to hand this to you. I'll do the lid. <laughs> yeah, barrel brew. Even with uh, White Labs' new... Um, Yeast packs, which let's face it, we love it. The cell count that they got on their new yeast packs is amazing. Yes. Uh, we do three starters, three cans of proper, three packs of yeast, which is amazing for a barrel brew. Right. We're normally we'll buying six. Yeah. So we're not mad about it for, for sure. Yeah. We pretty much use White Labs As exclusively except for our Hefeweizen. Right. We which do we use the, the Weiss Definer. Weiss Definer. Uh, y yeast. Yep, from Y yeast. Come on, White Labs. Get it together. We need a Y spiner strain from y'all. <laughs> we shoot for banana in our in our heifer. And it's just a good yeast for it. I mean, Y yeast does make a good one. They do. For the heifer vibes, it just doesn't fit our profile. White Labs, I should say. Y Labs. I, yes. I said Y yeast. And we are done. Just to let y'all know, now that we have this sealed up, I'll go ahead and tell y'all that 1056 is where we should have been. Unfortunately, we taste our wart. So our hydrometer is bottoming out right now. You should always test, taste your wart. Always taste your wart. It's, but it's a cool thing. we nailed 1056 on this one. Like we did. To the money. Let's come in and show them the color, though. Oh, this is a color. pale ale. Um, there's our color, which I'm pretty happy with. That nice kind of golden color. Um, I'm good with it. I think it's... But I'm sure, it. and I'm, I'm going to hope that Lance's editing skills does this right. He's going to put a picture of this when we read it right here. <laughs> right there. Uh, 1056, we nailed it on the money. I'm excited about this one. And, you know, if if our fermentation with White Labs, we normally nail our fermentation every time. Um, sometimes too good. <laughs> so, uh, and this SS, SS Brutec Unitank. Uh, does the dang thing for us. I think next time y'all see us, we'll probably be in two weeks or so kegging this beer and we're adding flavoring to the kegs yes. for all six kegs. So it is a pale ale done six ways. As a base, correct. Yeah. Pale Which, ale done six ways. 
we we didn't go crazy with the hops. It's you know the hops are kind of a back flavoring. It's a flavoring hop really. Um, the extract is basically going to give us our flavors. Yep. We're going to try to keep the channel active for you guys. If there's something else y'all like to see, if there's a brew, a beer, some beer. Yeah. Let hey, y'all, y'all we'll let us know. If there's a beer that you're like, I wish I knew how to brew this. Leave it in the comments because we will figure it out and show you how to do it. I wish I had the guy or the girl's name. I think it was a guy that asked about our plumbing. We will be doing a walkthrough on our system. Yep. On, on um, all three systems. Sorry, I couldn't answer right away. It's so hard to put a diagram in the chat. So I just, to me, if we break it down for you guys, it'll be a lot cleaner. It'll be easier for you guys. Um, and, and I really do appreciate it. We've been getting more comments lately. We still have a ton. We'd like to see more. But go ahead and keep leaving us comments. We're, we're doing our best to answer. We're a young channel. We're trying to come up. It's it's about nothing but giving you guys education. If y'all think we're doing something wrong or we are doing something wrong, we'd like for y'all to point us out. Absolutely. As a home brewer or a brewer, we're always, you're always learning. You just you never you never know everything. So we always want to try new things. We're, we're just we're, here to have fun. Have fun. And drink good beer. And drink good beer. So. <laughs> All right, let's do it. If y'all don't mind, go ahead and uh, like and subscribe. Go ahead and hit the little bell down below. Ding, ding, ding. ding. And we'll catch y'all on the next one. Later, y'all. All right, ready? Yep. Don't wait. Nope, this ain't happening. Okay. All right. All right. Uh-huh. Ain't getting stuck this time. <laughs> I tried, but it, I tried it, but it was like, bleh. <laughs> like, most of the time, people were like, yeah, this shirt's cool. You know, got a bunch of trunks. Yeah. They were, like, in the front, like, doing, like, ah. Like, this shit. Because I had up. zoomed in on the. I'm going to throw that out anyway. Yeah, I know. All right, y'all. So. Oh, wait. I was, ready. I was looking over there. That's fine. You're working. You're a working <laughs> man.